know how you do that. But Toby Young, um, was the president uh, indulging in anti-British rhetoric? Yes, he has been. And um, I think it's unfortunately um, the government, as we've just heard from Jeremy, has been very wet about this. Um, uh, president Obama has been dis behaving absolutely disgracefully. Um, he referred to the company as British Petroleum in order to whip up anti-British sentiment when it hasn't been known as British Petroleum since 1998. It's a British company, largely. Well, it, it's, it's, no, it's, it's not. It's, it's called six, itself a British six company. Six directors are yeah. UK, yeah. Uh, six US, 10,000 employees UK, 20,000 US. How is that a British company? Obama has, um, has, has called for, he said that he would sack Tony Haywood. Um, he is questioning whether, D, whether BP should be able to pay a dividend this year. Bear in mind that the people who will suffer if BB, BP doesn't pay a dividend are British pensioners. Mm -hmm. when, when President Obama talks about keeping a, bo a boot on the throat of BP, <laughs> BP doesn't stand for British Petroleum, it stands for British pensioners, because one in every six pounds paid out in dividends to British pension funds is from BP. Uh, this week, President Obama said that um, he wants to find out whose arse he wants to kick. Well, if President Obama wants to have a lesson in kicking ass, I suggest he tunes in on Saturday evening to watch England play the USA, where Wayne Rooney, Stephen Gerrard, and Aaron Hester giving a lesson in how to kick some ass. <laughs> the man up there in the uh, second row from the back, with spectacles. Yes, sir. I'm just wondering with the President, with all this rhetoric he's saying about punishing the BP uh, executives for what they've done, will he now accept that he's got to send the Americans back to Bhopal to face some justice for what they've done with their chemical leak over there. He, he, he's just saying double standards. Because they were all acquitted. <laughs> so I think the point about double standards is important because actually 8,000 people died in Bhopal and the US refused to extradite um, the American head uh, of Union Carbide, Carbide, and it's taken 25 years for, for them to even get the case heard in India. So yes, there, there are parallels, but the substantial point here is that a terrible disaster has happened. We're sitting here in Plymouth right now. Uh, if, we, if, the, if you look at the parallel, it would be the slick from here all the way up to Norwich, extending up to Wales. And quite rightly, people in this country, regardless of which company it was, would expect compensation, would expect the company to clear up, and there would be genuine anger. And I think President Obama is reflecting that. And if it means having to use the courts, which you shouldn't have to, because the point is BP should be taking its own responsibility, it shouldn't have to be told. Uh, and so I think they're important precedent is being set. Okay. Look, you said in, in the blue shirt there, in the bright blue shirt. I, yes. I believe that we should uh, go across there with, with, our, with our help teams, like, we, like a natural disaster in the world being, being earthquakes and that, we should go with all our help and we should go over there and help them. Okay. And I, 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 uh, the man there with the beard. I'd like to see the same passionate rhetoric being directed from Mr. Obama towards some American oil companies and their behaviour in the Niger Delta. Ben Bradshaw. <laughs> Reminder that what we're talking about is anti-British re yeah. rhetoric. I was, which going, to return, I was going to return to the original question, which, is, which was whether this needs or should damage US-British relations. I, I don't think it does need to, and it shouldn't. I have to say I don't think it's helped by comments like those of, of Boris uh, Johnson blundering around uh, taking a personal pot shot at Barack Obama. I agree with Salma. I think this is a major environmental catastrophe. All Barack Obama is articulating is the very genuine anger that we would feel in this country if an oil company had created this environmental disaster on our doorstep. Not just environmental, but it's impacting on jobs, it's impacting on tourism. Now, we can have a debate as to whether BP should or could have done more, but certainly their PR has been a disaster, whether we like it or not, uh, but it doesn't need to damage our relations. and the American government today has made quite clear that that is, is the case, but I think politicians here, and that includes people like you, Toby, need to behave with some more restraint if we're not well, a politician. But Ben, um, you know, because of President Obama's tub-thumping populist attacks on the company, it's lost 40% of its value. It's gone down in value from 112 billion. It hasn't 73 billion. The share hasn't gone down because of what Obama said. The share has gone oh, down really? because of the disaster. Okay, not just because of the disaster, but because of all the threats that Obama's been making about criminal prosecutions and so forth. I think Sam is absolutely right. Why shouldn't the polluter play? I think Sam is absolutely, ben, absolutely right. When something like this happens, why should you pay, or the taxpayer, or the American taxpayer pay, when the oil companies make a lot of money from taking oil out of the ground, and when, when something like this happens, they should pay the cleanup. But the loss in its share price does not reflect what it needs to pay.
Because you think it can, it, can, it, can, it can pay all the compensation it's required to pay and clean up the mess and cap the world without losing 40% of its value. Katie Hopkins. I find the whole thing really peculiar that we can't just group together, as one of the gentlemen in the audience says, and just sort of work out what we need to do from here forward. How do we look at solving this problem? And later on, we'll work out who's to blame, who needs to pay, and what we need to change going forward. I have three children under five, and I can tell you at home, when there's a problem, they sort out their problem with a great deal more efficiency than these guys are doing. Who, who, are, you, who are you saying not sorting it out? BP, BP or the American government? The oil or companies working with BP, Obama, possibly Boris Johnson's not helping, the name-calling, the finger-pointing, he did that, no, Mum, I did that, no, she didn't, he hit me first. That's what's going on at the moment. And I just think we need to kind of grow up, sort the problem out, grip it, and then work out what we have to do in the future to stop this happening again. The man, the man in the black shirt up there. Yes. Uh, it, was, it was even suggested today that uh, the US should seize BP's assets. And the last time that happened, it was actually called Anglo-Iranian oil in 1953. And Britain orchestrated a coup of that democratic government. Would the government be prepared to do a similar action today? <laughs> I think the answer is no. <laughs> and, and the man up there, uh, in the blue, yes, in blue, you said. Uh, well, Obama might have been guilty of many things, but he's declared a moratorium on exploratory deep sea drilling, which is more than this government yes. has. Okay. And the man in front, uh, in, in green there, yes, you, sir. It seems to me like it becomes an attack on Britain and not on BP, because what Obama's been saying who is asked to kick and stuff, it, it seems like he's covering his own ass not to be kicked. That's okay. what basically happened. Okay, okay, I'll take one more point for the woman in blue there. Uh, me? Yes, you. Right. Uh, it seems to me that the, his ratings, his popularity ratings in America is quite low at the moment, and the suggestion is that with the elections coming up in November, that the talk that he's speaking at the moment is actually more to do with that and trying to make sure that the November elections work in his favour. Are you offended by it? About what? By the language he's using? Um, yeah, I think kick-ass and that is not really the right way for the president to behave. No, okay. don't need to. All right. We'll go on. Um, if, you're, um, if, you're, if you're tweeting tonight or you want to uh, follow Twitter, our site is BBC Question Time. Uh, text us if you want to, 83981. CFAX 155 tells you what's being texted. Uh, watching digitally, push the red button. So much of this. And email us at our website, if you're very old fashioned. Right, let's go on to a question from Joe Watton, please. Joe Watton. Is Diane Abbott's nomination for the Labour leadership simply tokenism? Diane Abbott, who just scraped in for the Labour leadership race, uh, along with a vote from one of her competitors, apparently. Is this just tokenism, Toby Young? Well, it does look that way, um, given that um, she only scraped through with the support of David Miliband, who is one of her opponents. She can hardly pose much of a threat in his eyes to his candidacy. Um, one thing I find very curious about the Labour Party leadership election is, when I left university, I did flirt with the idea of joining the Labour Party, but ruled it out on the grounds that someone like me could never get to the top. You know, I'm not black. I'm not gay, um, I'm a white, middle-class, heterosexual male. I even did philosophy, politics and economics at Oxford. <laughs> what chance would I have in a modern, <laughs> vibrant party like the Labour Party committed to diversity and reflecting the rainbow-like quality of contemporary Britain? Yet, lo, of the five candidates, they all went to Oxford or Cambridge, four of them went to Oxford, those four are indeed white, middle-class, heterosexual males in their mid-40s. Three of them even study philosophy and politics and economics at Oxford. I mean, you know, if, if it wasn't for the fact that my first name isn't Ed and my second name isn't Willowband, I might actually have a chance. <laughs> Jeremy Hunt. Well, I might just add to that that the, the leader of my party is an Oxbridge-educated former political mm. special advisor. And I think uh, David Cameron has so entranced the Labour Party that they've got four candidates who are Oxbridge-educated former special advisors. So um, it does seem to be uh, curious from that point of view. But look, I don't know if it's tokenism or not, but I think it's a good thing for the Labour Party to have 
a big healthy debate about what happened. Uh, I can give them advice safe in the knowledge they won't listen to a word that I say. So I'll just say that we had 13 long, painful years in opposition. And we didn't get to the point of being able to go back into power.